is saying to us tonight when your back is against the wall he's gonna make a way for you what do we mean by the statement made that when your back is against the wall I started looking at the meaning of this word and I realized that this word is commonly used until it has become like a proverb. It was a word concocted by the military meaning that when they are cornered and they have no option the enemy has really pushed them to a corner where they are not able to move. They have no option. They have no, nothing else to do. They are remaining with wheels to write and prayers to make because they are going to die. That's when they say your wall, your back is against the wall. We find ourselves in such situations when our backs are against the wall. The scripture we have read is about David, uh, Daniel. Daniel finds himself with his back against the wall. He has no option. The document has been signed. The bill has passed. The king has put his signature. And the lords have put their signatures that are accompanying the king's signature. Daniel's life is hanging on a very, very small string. His death is imminent. His back is against the wall. There are things you can do when your back is against the wall. One, you can run. One, another thing, you can take your life. Another thing, you can break down and into depression and you give up of life and you say Lord take my life now because your back is against the wall what are some of the things that we find ourselves when our backs are against the wall you are lying on hospital bed and the doctor's reports have confirmed that you are not going to survive your situation has been confirmed and approved by the doctors and the machines. They are saying that your situation is beyond their capacity and you're going to die. Your back is against the wall. You're running a court case and you are sure of going to jail because evidence is against you and the evidence is beyond doubt. Your back is against the wall. You're having an issue of land and you have lost the case and you have to move and you have nowhere to take your family. You have nowhere to take your people. Your back is against the wall. You got a debt that you cannot pay and the debtors are coming for you fast and furious. Your back is against the wall. You have a termination letter and they are telling you that you have lost it. Your job is gone and that is where you have your, your, your daily uh, 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 dependence. Your family, you're paying rent, you're paying school fees from there and you have a letter already and you have nowhere to go. Your back is against the wall. You are in a funeral service and the one being lowered into the grave is the only source of your income, the hope of your life. The one that always stands in for you. He's like a cover or she's like a cover for you. But they are going down the grave. Your back is against the wall. You lost all your relatives that can support you. Your back is against the wall. We have people in the Bible who had their backs against the wall. David comes to Ziklag in 1 Samuel 30. And he finds the whole city burnt to ashes. And uh, the people rose up against him. And they wanted to stone him. His back was against the wall. Israel faces the Red Sea. They have no hope of ever coming out.
because the enemy is fighting them and, and really following them and they have nowhere to go. Their back was against the wall. A king, King Hezekiah, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 20, from verse 1, he faces the prophet of God, Isaiah. And Isaiah tells him, the Lord says, put your house in order, for you shall die and not live. The man of God, Hezekiah, turns to the wall because his back is against the wall. The messenger is a true messenger. The message is coming from the Lord himself, telling him that you will die and not live. His back was against the wall. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had their back against the wall. Because why? They were facing the burning fiery furnace. They have no hope at all of ever getting out of that situation or turning around and see life again. Their back was against the wall. Esther and the Jews with Mordecai, they were faced with death, mass, but mass execution that Haman had orchestrated. Their back was against the wall. The Lord sent me this night to speak to somebody tonight that though your back would be against the wall, there is a hand that is going to turn your story and show you that there is rescue. Your feet may be slipping off and you are giving up. I came to let you know it doesn't matter how far the devil has pushed you. It doesn't matter how much the devil has covered your space. God Almighty is about to change your story. Even though your back is against the wall, God is going to change your story. Shout a big amen to the Lord Jesus. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, even though your back is against the wall, God is going to make a way where there is no way. If you believe it, just shout a big amen to the Lord. Shout a big amen to the Lord Jesus. When I look at these scriptures and the situation that people find themselves, I try to look at their reactions. And the reactions are seen in the Bible. When people react... When their backs are against the wall, they react differently. I don't know how you react yourself. I don't know who you run to. But people run different directions and look for different avenues to run away from situations that suffocate them. Tonight we have come to the right place where you can run and find refuge. You can run and find answers. You can run and find solace. Jesus says in the sanctuary, your help is coming. Shout a big amen to the Lord. Your help is coming. When your back is against the wall, Jehovah God will rise up and he will fight for you. Jehoshaphat's back was against the wall. God fought for him. Daniel his back was against the wall. The Lord God fought for him. Tonight I come to you today. I don't know what it is that you are faced with. I don't know what you are going through as an individual. I don't know what you are going through as a family, as a marriage. I don't know what you are going through as a ministry. Jehovah God is saying to us tonight that even though your back is against the wall, he God will come through and he will lift you up and set you free in the name of Jesus Christ you shall not be ashamed you shall not be ashamed in the name of Jesus Christ say a big amen to the Lord Jesus look at your neighbor say neighbor even though your back would be against the wall you will not be ashamed Elijah's back was against the wall when Jezebel sent a message and told him tomorrow this time whatever you did to the prophets I will do the, I, I will do it to you tomorrow this time Jezebel had sent a word and told Elijah I will deal with you just the same way you dealt with my people 
Listen to me. It doesn't matter who sent you a message. It doesn't matter who said what. I have come here tonight to let you know. No matter the message that somebody has sent you. Jehovah God is going to lift you up. He will save you from all annihilation. He will save you from every kind of shame. He will lift you up in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow by this time you will be speaking a different language. You will be singing a new song in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen to Jesus. Amen. There are obvious reactions when your back is against the wall. Reaction number one. You become bitter because it is from within you that you begin to react. You become bitter because it is also from within. You become bitter. Most of the times you realize that the things you go through are orchestrated by people you know, people you understand, people you have worked with, people that you trust people that are very close to you now listen to me child of God from tonight there is a message that the Lord is giving to you tonight and the message is he is going to lift up your pain he's going to lift up the threat that is threatening your future you will live to declare the goodness of the Lord you will not die you will live you will not be ashamed you will be glorified even in this situation you are in God will turn it around and cause it to be a glorious moment for you shout a big amen to the Lord people go get bitter number two they cry until they have no strength to cry they cry until they have no strength to cry David cried and his people cried they had no strength even the strength in their bones were finished because they were crying. Number two, they seek revenge on the possible cause. They look for revenge on the possible cause. David speaks about this in the book of Psalms 55 and verse 15. David says he is seeking for revenge because of what happened to him. 55 and verse 15. He says, let death seize them. Let them go down quick into hell for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. This is a prayer that David was praying, asking God to deal with his enemies. Listen to me, child of God. Even if you go through lots of hell, problems, don't seek revenge. The one who can revenge for you is the Lord. Come on, say amen to the Lord. David prayed and asked God to kill them. And number four, you wish to go back into slavery. The children of Israel cried to Moses and they said, Were well, there are no graves in Egypt where we could be buried. Why did you bring us to the wilderness to die? Why did you bring us here to be ashamed? There were graves in Egypt. We could have died there and be buried there. We had some food there. We had lintels. We have cucumbers. They were desiring to go back. You know when your back is against the wall. You can desire to go back. You can desire to dissolve your marriage. You can desire to even sell off your property. And go to the village. You can desire to die. And you walk around. Speaking about death. Because why? Your back is against the wall. Another thing that comes upon you when your back is against the wall is you become suicidal. You desire to kill yourself. You desire to take your life. You ask me, can it happen to a believer? I say, yes, it can. It happened to Moses. He said, God, this, these people are too much. I can't carry them anymore. Take my life. They are too heavy for me. It happened to Elijah. Elijah said, this is too much. I cannot go on like this. Take my life, Lord. They desire to die. There are many people today that desire to die. We see statistics of even pastors killing themselves. Another pastor 
pastoring a large church of more than 5,000 members in the US. He went to preach in a conference and in the morning they found his body floating in the bathtub in the morning, dead. When they did autopsy, they realized he had taken his own life. It's, it's not because of the preaching, because in the previous night he preached so hard, he gave people hope, but inside of him, he was dying. Listen to me, child of God. You may be walking very well. You may be running around every day. Everybody looks at you and see like you are okay. But inside of you, you are dying. Inside of you, your back is against the wall. On your family front. On your finances. On your own health. Among your children. There are things that are going on. Your back is against the wall. The Lord sent me tonight to say to somebody. Even though your back is against the wall. There is a window of hope. I said there is a window of hope. God is going to lift you up again. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it. Look at that neighbor and say neighbor. You are rising again. In the name of Jesus. You are rising again. Another thing that people do when their backs are against the wall, they retreat to be alone. They don't want anybody to be around them. They sleep all day and sleep all night. They write memoirs just of suicide. They have given up hope. I look at some of them on Facebook, people writing their hearts out, and I know these ones are going through some stuff in life somebody wrote and said there's no meaning in life and the following day he was gone another one said there's no friend in this world even relatives the following day we hear he was dead people are going through a lot of stuff but the Lord sent me tonight to speak to somebody even if it is one person tonight and tell you your harvest is waiting. There's something God is waiting to do with your life. You don't have to give up now. Say amen to Jesus. You don't have to give up right now. There's something ahead of you. Tomorrow is going to be greater. A young man, some few years ago, he used to be a member in our church. And I was scheduled to travel. I was going to the U.S. for a mission. And something happened to him a few days before I left. He was conned from his office. He met some people from West Africa who told him, bring us the money. He had made a lot of money in the business and they knew it. Bring the money. We will multiply the money and give you double. So I don't know what spirit covered his mind. And he took the money and gave it to them. To a tune of about five million. A lot of money for the young man. The man disappeared with the money. He couldn't trace them. Their phones went off. They were foreigners from another country. So the young man called me and told me, Papa, I don't know what to do. I will lose my job and this is the only job I have. My mother depends on it. My brothers depend on it. I'm educating my sisters. I'm helping in some projects. I told him, don't worry. The same God you are calling upon, he will turn around your story and you might find that money. Before I left, before I traveled. The young man waited for about two days. I traveled. After one day, while outside, I tried calling his number. The number was not going through. Then I called one of my pastors. I said, where is so and so? I'm trying to reach him. He said to me, haven't you heard? I said, what? The young man has taken his life. The body is in the mortuary. I said, my goodness, I told him not to worry. Then they were planning for his burial. I said, now I don't know what to do. The family refused. They said they are not going to bury somebody who has taken his own life in their village home so they have to bury him in Langata I was so discouraged 
Then after they buried, about five days, the police caught up with these people and they recovered all the money. And see, the young man was in the grave and the money has been recovered and the men are in custody. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your help is around the corner. You don't have to give up. You don't have to take your life. You don't have to make some decisions that are going to affect you eternally. You need to rise up and know that God is able in the name of Jesus Christ. He's going to make a way out of your situation. I say he's going to make a way out of your situation. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm here to talk to somebody. God is going to make a way out of your situation. You're not going to be discouraged. You're not going to be dismayed. You're not going to be ashamed. Jehovah God says, call on me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not about. Say amen to the Lord. Amen. Say amen to Jesus. Amen. Look at that neighbor you are sitting next to. If you don't have a neighbor, look for one. Because this time I want you to talk to somebody. I don't want you to just look at me. Talk to somebody. Tell them, neighbor, God will make a way for you. Be a preacher. Tell them with that convincing sound. Tell them, neighbor, God will make a way for you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your situation right now. I don't know and I cannot understand. But God who sees in secret understands your pain. Understands the ultimation that has been given to you by the enemy. He understands what you're going through. He's going to make a way in the name of Jesus. Shout a bigger amen to the Lord. Shout a bigger amen to Jesus. He made a way. And he's going to make a way going to make a way. I'm confident in my spirit that God is going to make a way. He's going to make a way. You don't have to give up now. Say amen to Jesus. A certain lady gave up on the husband because the husband was not making enough money and gave up on him, left, went to the village, made some choices and decisions in the village, got married to an ex that they met in, in high school long time ago, looked for him. The man had messed up his life. He was sick. Then infected the lady with sickness. In one year, the husband she left, God remembered him. He got a better job. And they said to him, we are taking you out of the country. We need the passports for your children and your wife. He tried looking for the wife. She was nowhere. He had to ask his parents, do I marry now? Do I marry now? Now, now, now. And then where do I get the certificate? He got a young girl. And they ran to the pastor. Their pastor. Their pastor made an arrangement quick. You know those weddings. Ambazo hazija pangwa. Wali panga hapa hapa. Boop, boop. No, I can sign documents. So that the papers can go. And boop. They flew out. The lady was left nursing her wounds, crying and wishing. Because if she was asked, why did you leave? She said, life was so difficult. Sukuma wiki, tunakula miti tatu. Three sticks. Ungesikia vile and I explain. Miti tatu. Mafuta ni akupima. Unaenda unapimiwa, ya sijui 50 bob. I, I couldn't stand that. I couldn't, couldn't stand. I couldn't stand it. I wanted a good life. Listen. Pole pole ndio? Mwendo. Ambia jirani yako. Uvumilia. Muvumilivu. Come on, talk to me now. Muvumilivu. Hulambivu. Wacha haraka. Haraka haraka. Haina baraka. Mwenda pole. Hajikwai. Hey, hey. Uh, give them a high five and tell them where you are, God is coming through for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't compare yourself with anybody. Don't rise up and say, so and so is doing better than me. Listen, you might be doing better than them because God is with you.
ah say a bigger amen to Jesus give him praise in the house of the Lord ah shout a bigger amen shout a bigger amen a young man lived with his wife for 15 years no child no child he began to blame the wife and said you are the one who is barren I will kick you out the woman said that I've been checked there's no problem with me I am not the man said no it is you they came to a place the man decided to leave left the woman the woman went to their parents and spoke to them and told them the man has taken off and he threatened me with a panga said that he will kill me if he finds me there the parents said come back home our daughter we want to see you alive we don't want to have a grave we want to see you alive so the woman went back within no time two three years she got another man <laughs> the man she went in the man's home two months <laughs> she began vomiting the man had the woman is pregnant he said, ah. he got he got married to another woman the same no problem no no sign he was the one who had a problem if only he went to a doctor and seen a doctor and the doctor helped him and prayers are pushed he'll get babies come on say amen to the lord amen. so in in that situation the man after the wife got married to another man he went to see a doctor to ask what is it they found he had a very small problem i won't explain because we have children here he had a very small problem they did something on him and boom he was okay he began to wish the wife was back because the one he has is a devil the one that left was an angel Ambia mwenzako vumilia wacha mbio nyingi wacha mbio nyingi mwambie jirani yako sio tu kwa mambo ya ndoa in any area that the devil is pushing you hold on because the lord is coming the lord is coming those that will persevere to the end the same shall be saved wait upon the lord as you wait upon the lord he will renew your strength you will mount up with wings like an eagle you will run and not grow weary you will walk and not faint because the lord is on your side say amen to jesus christ come on slap your neighbor high five and tell them wait upon the lord those who wait upon the lord will do exploits they will mount up with wings they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint they will begin to rise up day by day in the name of jesus instead of shame they will see glory instead of humiliation they will see the glory of god in the name of jesus christ your back may be against the wall but tonight the Lord speaks and tells you, even if your back is against the wall, don't worry. The Lord is able to help you. Come on, say amen to Jesus. Do me a favor tonight. I want you to preach alongside with me. Turn to your neighbor and preach to them. And tell them, even though your back is against the wall, uh, the Lord will make a way. He will make our way and he's making our way tonight. He's making our way right now. I prophesy from this service, the way is going to be made. God is making a way in your business. God is making a way in your health. God is making a way in your marriage. God is making a way in your, in your place of work. God is making a way in your ministry. Shout a bigger amen to Jesus. He made a way. When it seemed like it was over, He made a way. My goodness. Look up and say, Lord Jesus, when it seemed like it was over, You made a way. May You make a way for me in the name of Jesus. May You make a way for me. 
in Jesus mighty name glory be to Jesus give him a praise offering tonight in the name of the Lord come on give him a praise offering tonight in the mighty name of Jesus come on put your hands together give him a praise offering tonight in the name of Jesus he's making a way for you I can see with the eyes of the spirit God making a way for you I don't know what you're going through I don't know what the devil has done I don't know what people are saying about you but I'm here to let you know that my father the God of heaven the creator of the heavens and the earth he is a God who can make a way he's going to make a way for you he's going to make a way for you you in the name of Jesus where they left you yesterday is not where they will get you tomorrow I say where they left you yesterday it's not where they will get you tomorrow God is making a, a way for you if you believe it shout a bigger amen to Jesus oh, will make a way amen. he will make a way for you amen. when you're back is against the wall. He will make a way. Daniel discovered. We go back to that scripture. Daniel, when he knew his back was against the wall. Ha! Ah, in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. When Daniel knew that the writing was signed. You know, there's the writing without a signature. But when the writing is signed, look at who signed it. And then you look at the contents. The writing was signed. And the writing was against him and the children of Israel. When he knew it was signed, he knew now the battle now changes. There are rumors that people can talk. But when you know somebody has already gained access to a signature of an altar. Am I talking to somebody? When you realize somebody has worked his case against you. And has gotten a signature against your life. Maybe from an altar. An altar of a curse. Sacrificed. And made enchantments. And the wind came and landed in your ears that they have already done it. Or oh, a document is signed. A divorce is signed. A death certificate is signed against somebody who is a breadwinner to you. A signature makes a whole difference in a document. Ah. Tell your neighbor, leave rumors alone. Rumors don't have signatures. You know why rumors don't have signatures? It's because the rumor carrier does not want his signature on what he's saying. If you tell him, can I call that person here? You say, they say, no, please, don't mention me. <laughs> why? Because they don't want their names to be mentioned in the rumor. Listen, we are about to pray. Just now. You are back it's not going to be against the wall anymore. You are rising strong and you're going to be what God wanted you to be. I don't know whether I'm talking to the right people right now. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, when your back is against the wall and it seems like it's over, he will make a way. And tonight he's making a way for you. And tomorrow night he is crowning you with the crown of glory and power in the name of Jesus Christ. Give him some praise in the house tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise to the glory of his holy name. When Daniel heard that the writings were signed, his actions would depend or determine the results. Your actions, when you are cornered, your actions will determine your results. I say to you that actions are different. Others will blame God. Others will want revenge. Others will want suicide. 
Others will say, it's done. I'm done. I'm giving up hope. I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm not fighting anymore. But Daniel took a step. He did three things which I want to share with you tonight. And then we pray. He was a different man. And I encourage you that when your back is against the wall, do these three things. When you follow Esther, Esther did these three things. When you follow Joseph, he did these three things. Talk about the woman whose debtors came to take her own sons, the two sons. She did the same thing. The Bible says when he knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed. Say amen. amen. He first God. <laughs> Say amen to Jesus. When your back is against the wall, face God in prayer. Because when you face God in prayer, my friend, the devil has nothing he can do. He will run skelter, skelter, running away because he knows your help comes from him. Your help is not from men. Don't start calling people when your, your back is against the world. Stop calling relatives. They will run around with your story. They will talk about it. And actually, the ones who talk more are those who didn't help you. They will tell people how you called them. They say, Unaona? Alikuwa kana jifanya. Si ni namba ya nani? Ni namba ya nani? At what time? 17, 21. Nani alipiga? Ana kuonyesha. Nani alipiga? Nasema, eh, ni yeye. They keep that evidence. They keep it screenshot and save it so that they can tell everybody how you are finished and you are depending on them that is people but God when you call God he says in Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3 he says call me call me say amen call me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Look at your neighbor and say, there are things you don't know. There are things you don't understand. But when you begin to pray, God begins to open up your eyes. You begin to see the great things that he's able to do. He's able to build a bridge where there is no bridge. You cross over. You don't know how you cross. I prophesy to you today the things that the enemy has created against you will disappear and you will not know how they disappeared. God is going to fight for you somebody in the name of Jesus. Say amen to the Lord Jesus. God is going to raise a standard that the enemy cannot fight. Hey, my goodness. He says I will show you. Do you know you also can do miracles. You yourself. These are miracles we never find. Mungu we never find Zaidi. Come on, shout a bigger amen to Jesus. So God says, I want to give you strength. I want to show you things. I want to reveal to you some things that you do not understand and you do not know. But I can only do this if you call my name. If you pray. If you ask me. Lord, here I am. I will answer you. <laughs> so David remembered. When my back is against the wall. I don't have to worry. I have to turn to God. Amen. The person who challenges me more. Is Hezekiah. Hezekiah challenges me. You know why? A prophet comes. Prophesies to him. And tells him Hezekiah. Unakufa. Second Kings 20 verse 1. And this man leaves the prophet standing. He turns against that same wall. 
In those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord. It was a true prophet, true prof prophecy. So, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. If it was you, what would you do? You say, Kanya say, Mua Mua. Kama Mungu Dea Mua Mua. Who am I? <laughs> you start kugawa mashamba. Na unanza kuongea na watu wale ambao ulikosea. Ujeni hapa. Kama nilikosea. Nisame. Ni, ni, ni na mimi. Unisame. Na mimi na kusame. Bwana Yesu wa sviwe. The famous quote of Nyayo. When he said. Kama iomudu mina kosea. Na zame. Aebia and Zame. <laughs> so Hezekiah, instead of doing what many people would do when your back is against the walls, he did something. He turned his face to the wall. Don't allow the wall to hold you back. Turn. Face the wall and bring God to that wall. Amen. The amen is weak. I say turn to the wall and bring God to that wall. And say God this wall is trying to hold me back. But I know you can bring it down and I can leave again. And so he prayed unto the Lord and said. He reminded God in prayer. He said in verse number 3. I beseech thee O Lord remember now how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in your sight. And Ezekiah wept. So he was crying now to the right person. He was not crying to a man. He was crying to the right person. Jehovah God. Then verse 4 <laughs> came to pass a 4 before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, to Isaiah. Isaiah has delivered the message. He's going away. Hezekiah didn't even bother talk to, Isaiah, to, to, to Isaiah because kuna watu waneza bribe prophet. Now I'm going to be a prophet. Change the words. Change them. The prophet, if he changes, it's his own word, not his. Before he reached the gate, the word came. And what did the word say? Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. The title has come back. The captain of my people. That says the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up unto the house of the Lord. Say amen to Jesus. God Almighty spoke and said, I am making a way where there was no way. Even heaven knew that there was no way here. But God had to change it. I prophesy today, there will be a way where there has not been a way in the name of Jesus. God sent me with a word for you that even though your back is against the wall, God is going to make a way for you. Somebody don't cry. Somebody don't complain. Somebody don't give up. God is doing something. Daniel turned to God in prayer. Esther turned to God in prayer. Ooh, Hannah turned to God in prayer. Say amen to the Lord. You turn to God in prayer. Lift up both hands and say myself. Put your name there. Myself. Jonah Obonyo. Turn your face to God in prayer. Turn your heart back to God in prayer. And when you turn to God in prayer, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never turn my back on you. I will keep you. I will watch you as an apple of my eye. Whatever I promised, I will do it to you. <laughs> you know why they turned to God in prayer? It's because, it's because the signature that was laid on that letter, the signature of the Lord is bigger than the signature of men and demons. Ah, say amen to the Lord. 
Look at that neighbor, say neighbor. The signature of man remains signature of man. There is a higher signature, the seal of God, that is sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ, sealed by the Holy Ghost, sealed by God the Father himself. This seal is superior than the seal of man. When there was a seal of Lazarus' death, Jesus came with a bigger seal. And he said, I unseal that seal, and I'm making another seal of life. They seal death, I'm speaking life. I decree today in the name of Jesus, your situation is turning around, and I speak life into it. I speak life into it. I speak life into your situation. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life. Say a big amen to Jesus. The signature of Haman <laughs> against Mordecai and against Esther was overthrown. God changed the seal. Say amen to the Lord. You know, when a lower court makes judgment and you go to a higher court, do you know the higher court can overrule the judgment of a lower court? Turn to somebody and tell them, whatever judgment that was done by the devil against you, you have come to a Supreme Court where there is no appeal. And the Supreme Court is saying, you won. Supreme Court is saying, you won the battle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The Supreme Court is saying, you are making it. The amen is weak. Amen. I, wanna, I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Can you tell your neighbor, turn your face to God? Ah, say amen to Jesus. Turn your face to God. And out of turning your face to God, face the darkness. Can you help me? Look at that neighbor and tell them, face the darkness. You, you know, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing when I look at this scripture and I see the revelations that God is giving me concerning this, this story. Daniel prayed, but he still faced the lions. After prayer, leave it to God. Now, now shake that neighbor and tell them, understand this. After prayers, it is not instant. Give God time. So after prayers, Daniel woke up from prayer and there are policemen all around his house. They were waiting for him. They said, you have broken one of the great laws that was just passed the other day. We are taking you to the lions. God did not kill the lions. God did not cover the lion's den. Come on, say amen. amen. Your challenger may still be alive and well and beating his chest and telling you that I have won it. You can pray. You can pray. You can pray. Lama, lama. But the lions, you'll have to face the lions. Hey, I don't know whether you understand. The enemies were saying, Daniel, until you are praying, you are wasting your time. So you have prayed. The lions are still there. They are waiting for you. Lama, lama. Erija, lama. Inge, lama. Lama, lama. Mag, yo, clam, ye. E, si, ya, maombi. E, tu me win, tayari. Lama, lama. Now you look like a fool. Oh, makarababa, shandarababa. They tell you, continue. You know the YouTube thing that says, Continue. And you hear the words, that, I don't want peace. I want trouble. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, my goodness. So Daniel, after prayer, he left the whole thing in the hands of God. Because God's plans are not our plans. 
There's a song, I, I don't know how to interpret it from Luo. They sing and say, Pong Nyasai, Rego Mos. In other words, Ile, eh, Ile machine ya kusaga ya unga, ya mungu, inasaganga pole pole. Sasa wewe wachia mungu. Yake, ako na time yake. Wewe fanya maombi na umuachie. Ingine inachukua 2 hours. Ingine inachukua 3 hours. Ingine inachukua 12 hours. Ingine ni 24 hours. I said today, there are some of you, by tomorrow night, as we come back here, your miracle will have done, been done in Jesus' name. Receive the grace in the name of Jesus. I said receive the grace in the name of Jesus. Say a big amen. Yeah. So Daniel leaves. And they have handcuffed him. They have tied his feet. Like the three Hebrew boys. <laughs> like Esther. And all the rest. The enemy was clapping. Because God does not do it immediately. He comes slowly. Say amen. Although kuna zingine nafanyanga upesi. Yenda kubiri ukambani. Kwa vijana. Those back in the days. Tuka pambana na uchawi. Tuka pambana na uchawi. Alabu kuna ingine diyo. Haka tokea. Haka funga mkutano. Kasema sitaki kuona watu hapa. Muna pigia watu kelele. Na mini kachukua microphone. Nika declare. Nilikuwa nimesikia wa ubiri wengine waki declare vitu. Akina Benzo ni dahosa. Alikuwa very arrogant. Na mini declare vitu. Na mini pia nika sikia. Nika sema kama vile wali declare. Na mini na declare. Nika sema na wewe diyo. Unadhubutu kutishia watu wa mungu. Nakupa 24 hours transfer kutoka hapa. Upelekwe kule kwa mashifta. Those days kulikuwa na shifta. Upelekwe kwa mashifta asuko katikati. Uwa diyo uko. Uwezo kutu diyo hapa. By the time we were closing the meeting, oh no, it was Friday, the D.O. himself came with a letter. He has already received a letter of transfer. Amekuja kwa vijana wa muombe, kwa sababu amepele kwa zijui marisa bit zijui wapi uko, kwa mashifta. Ni vile haku kwa na Facebook. Tungeweka, lakini haku kwa na Facebook. Unayona tu by face and by eyes. Kulikuwa na eye on the spot. There's no need internet. Alipele kwambio. Na kwambia kuna zingine mungu wanafanya immediate. And I feel, man of God, I feel in this house, there are several people seated here that by tomorrow, this time, tomorrow, this time, tomorrow, this time, if I be a man of God, tomorrow, this time, you will have your miracle in your hands in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Walk in it in Jesus' name. Begin to enjoy it in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give God the glory. Give God the praise. Emakaya Rabo Center. Manda Rabashia. What did he do? He prayed. And he believed in the signature of God. And number two, go back to that scripture. He did only three things. He prayed. Go back. Uh -huh. He knelt three times a day, prayed, and gave thanks. He prayed and gave thanks. Ask your neighbor, can you give thanks in such a situation? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, change your pattern and begin to give thanks to God. So Daniel began to give thanks. He gave thanks before his God. I can see him thanking God and saying, thank you, Father, for bringing the lions so that these people may know you are the lion of Judah. Thank you, Father, for bringing the pit so that these people know that Jesus will be in the pit for three days and come out again. Thank you, Lord, for doing this so that it's a national event that people may know that I serve a living God. I say to you today, your situation will bring glory to the Lord Almighty. The amen is weak. 
he gave thanks. Say amen to the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor, give thanks. In such a moment, you give even an offering. In such a moment, you even give an offering. You say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I bless you. You say, Lord, no matter what's going on around me, I'm thanking you. That was not a time to give thanks. But Daniel discovered the power of thanksgiving. He gave thanks before his God. Number three, he walked with them to the lion's den. He was bold. He went to face the lions. He slept the whole night in darkness. There was no light. There was no TV. There was no radio. There was no internet that you would be, <laughs> be doing this in the lion's den. You know, there are places you get even ladder your internet in Asia. Simu unaangalia tu hivi. Kimeumana. You feel like you are dead. Kimefanya nini? Kimeuna kimeumana. Mpaka ukiangalia mtu ana ako kwa YouTube unamuuliza unafanya nini kwa YouTube? What are you doing on YouTube? Ati niko kwa Facebook. Anakuonyesha kitu inachekesha. Ati farasi imeshika eh, punda imeshika haiana kwa masikio. You don't see anything to laugh about. Because yakile unapitia. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kila kitu inakuwa nuisance. Hata TV unataka ipoeshwe. Radio unasema poeshe ni yokelele. Wengine wako jikoni, wanapika mayai, unasema yu arufu ni mbaya. Tueni yu, tueni kabisa. Wana yesu wa sifiwe. Ati mungina mengia na chips na chicken. Unama, e nini? I don't feel like. Niacheni mimi niende ni lale. Unenda kulala usingizi ya kuna. Unapinduka pinduka unatoka jasho ambao uelewi inatoka hapo. Bed is, the bed is wet. Jasho. Kwa sababu your body is reacting to your fear. You know your body listens to your attitude and the way you think. And how you feel. Uneza pita mahali. Na kawoga kafike. Ama umejificha mahali. Na wakora wa meingia. Do you know what aku, ata kupumua ni shida? <laughs> Mweza haku wana kukuza uke. Wana pumua na ngufu. Slap your neighbor high five and tell them, he is making a way for you tonight. He's making a way for you tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the night as he went into the lion's den, Daniel remained with the lions the whole night. The king had no power to remove him. The princesses and the lords had no power to remove him. You reach a place where human beings cannot help you. Your back is against the wall. But Jehovah walks in and shuts the mouth of the lions. You see danger, but it's not affecting you. You hear them, you know, even breathing, but they cannot affect you. Because God has built an edge around you, around you, and is making a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Say amen to Jesus. And then what happens the following day? Look at what happens in the following day. The Bible says, then, 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 then it says, he, he did not sleep 19 Go to 19. I want to see the following morning. Following morning. Yes. The king arose the following morning. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice. This voice was to test the waters to see if, if the man is inside. Daniel! <laughs> if, he's, if it's silent, he knows the guy is, is gone. 
He said, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver you from the lions? And Daniel said, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocence was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. In verse 23, then the king was exceeding glad for him and commanded, this is what's going to happen. Your harvest must come. Ah, say amen to Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you gave up, this would not happen. Look at what happened. The king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of heart was found upon him because he believed in his God. The next verse says, and the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel. Look at the table turning. I prophesy, tables are going to turn. Your accusers are going to suffer because they did not accuse you with any good reason. They were rejoicing, but now whatever they prepared against you is what is going to eat them up. In the name of Jesus, shout a big amen to the Lord. Shout a big amen to the Lord. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them their children their wives and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den before they arrived at the bottom of the den they were hearing outside their I pray that God will protect you from any harm of a, a, a wickedness done by your husband. Yes. Ah. Amen. Done by your wife. You will not suffer the problems of your husband. Amen. Come on, say amen to Jesus. Look at those women, the wives. What did they do? They were just happy at home. Their husbands are working. And then when the judgment comes, the children were grade four, grade three. and lions. mazuri. Lion in leo anointed of God. God can punish a lot of people because of his anointed. One person. And that person is you. Amen. That person is you. Say amen to the Lord. And the Bible says in the last, in the, the other verse, it says, then King Darius wrote, another signature came, to all people, nations, languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree, I make a decree, that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. He became an evangelist, an apostle, a pastor preaching the gospel of Jehovah on behalf of Daniel. And he said, they fear before the God of Daniel for he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. The king writing a message, a preaching about the God of Daniel. I pray that your God will stand out and your God will cause men to tremble and your message will go around the globe. People will speak about your God in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen to Jesus. When your back is against the wall you contend with prayer, thanksgiving and facing the darkness. Prayer, thanksgiving facing the dark. Rise up to your feet as we pray. If you know in one way or another your back is against the wall, lift up both of your hands tonight. I'm praying for you right now. Your back is against the wall. There's something that you're fighting. There's a situation you're facing. Just lift up both hands in Jesus' name. You made a way 
When her back was against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way You made a way Sing like you believe it was against the wall and it looks as if it was over you made a way lift up those hands unto him and we're standing here only because you made you made a you was against the wall and it still could see if it was over you made a way standing here and we're standing here only because you of his holiness tonight in the name of Jesus Makai ribayando rubo sheta yama imandere rubo shekanta ribayanda Jehovah we are in your presence once again tonight we are here Lord to glorify you we are here master to lift up your name we are here mighty God to say you are worthy of all the praise you are worthy of all the glory you are worthy of all the honor you are worthy of all adoration, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. When our backs are against the wall, Jehovah, you made a way. You made a way for Daniel. You made a way for Esther. You made a way for Joseph. You made a way, my father, for Hannah. You are making a way for us. You are making a way, my father. You are way, you're making a way, Jehovah God. Make a way for that woman, oh God. Make a way for that man, Jehovah. Make a way tonight in the name of Jesus. When their backs are against the wall, mighty God, they have no option. Their hearts, almighty God, are disturbed. Their spirits are disturbed. And they don't know who to run to. Father, our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. That you are able to make a way. I pray that you make a way, Lord. In the name of Jesus, make a way, my Father. Imandere de bosha, nare de boganza. Inere de bosha, kante rabayanda. Make a way, my Father. Make a way. In the name of Jesus, make a way right now. I release the anointing. I release the power. I release the action of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let the way be made. Let the way be made. May the way be made. You don't understand. I may look okay, but my heart is broken. 
I may look fine, but I'm not fine. I need the grace of God to keep me. Lift up that hand. Father, you have spoken to us tonight. You have given me a word. I've released it the way it came. I pray for everyone lifting up their hands tonight. Lord, you are hearing our voice. You are hearing our cry. You are hearing our prayer. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, if any of them, Jehovah, because of the situation and what they have gone through, my Lord, have made a mistake by their words of mouth, by decisions they have made, by contemplation of something, that is not according to your will. Lord, I pray, forgive them. Forgive them tonight. In the name of Jesus. Forgive them tonight, oh God. For we know pressure can cause us to do things that hurt you, oh God. We know pressure can cause us to say and utter words that may hurt others and even hurt us and hurt you, my Lord. I pray that you forgive in the name of Jesus. Cleanse and purify our minds. Oh God Almighty, have your way in our lives in the name of Jesus. And I pray this very hour, my Father, may you give them strength from, from within, strength in the spirit. Lord, charge them with the power like a lion. For you are the lion of the tribe of Judah, that they may rise, almighty God, and face the challenges in the name of Jesus. Lord, give them victory over every challenge. Give them victory, my Father, over every challenge in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I break every yoke. I break every yoke. I break every yoke. I command every power to bow. Bow. In the name of Jesus. And I pray this hour. Make a way. Make a way. Make a way. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Your harvest is waiting for you. You cannot give up now. Even if your back is against the wall, don't give up. Your harvest is waiting. The glory you are carrying, the power you are carrying, the manifestations are just about to begin. May you not give up in Jesus' name. Lift up your hands as we, as we pray a prayer tonight Lord I thank you because you are making a way where there is no way you surprised the children of Israel when they cried in the wilderness where there was no way there was no hope they had the right to cry because they'd they saw no hope they came out of Egypt but when they got to the wilderness, they were trapped. They didn't know what to do. But Father, you made a way because you are God who goes with his people even if their backs are against the wall. Lord, I pray that you make a way for that man. You make a way for that woman. May tonight be a night of miracles. Let miracles begin to happen in their very homes as they go to sleep as they kneel down to worship you tonight before they go to bed. Father, let the miracles begin to take place. Visit the offices that are supposed to release their letters, release their, their charge in the name of Jesus. Lord, turn around every judgment that is against them. Lord, turn around every judgment, every lion waiting to kill them. Lord, I pray, pour your spirit, pour your anointing upon those lions never to touch them in the name of Jesus that pen that was supposed to sign a document against their lives I pray right now hold it back in the name of Jesus you are God of miracles you're God of wonders you're God who turns around stories turn their stories around in Jesus name I pray give him a praise offering give him a praise offering
And I said, tonight, we're going to find out whether the devil that you serve or the God that I serve has more power. We believe in the healing gospel that must be preached through high-quality media production and the latest cinematic technology reaching the unreached all over the world. The Word taught, revealed, expanded, expounded and embedded deep into the heart of mankind awakens the mind to focus rightfully. Yes, darkness cannot stand in the way of the light and the light of the world is here. Walk in the light and live a good life. Watch Redeemer's Voice TV. Available on Bamba TV, Go TV, Stir Times, and digital free to air decoders and TVs. Redeemer's Voice TV. Bringing the liberating truth.